my name is Victoria. I'm a local pastry chef. I'm here today to um, show you my three favorite recipes. Um, you can make these any time of year, but since it's Valentine's Day, this is always a good reason to pop one out. Um, the recipes are in five minute, 20 minutes, and an hour increment. Um, the five minute one is my five minute mousse. I love this one. It, it comes together so fast and it's decadent and a sweet treat and if you make it it's actually healthier for you than like a box of jello food mix or you know jello pudding um, my next recipe is the dark as your heart cookies I did develop these for my husband who I love he has a darker sense of humor which I think is hilarious um, so I made these cookies you know for him uh, he likes them for Christmas and Valentine's Day. Um, they're really dark. They, they're, they look almost black sometimes. Um, I fill them with a raspberry um, seedless jelly, or you can put in like orange marmalade. I've done that too. Or actually, like, there's so many options. You could put in caramel, peanut butter. There's just a list of whatever goes well with chocolate and coffee and can go into these cookies. The last one is cream puffs. I love a good cream puff, um, but literally a cream puff can be any sort of thing that you can imagine. Um, it could be savory. It, I, I'll show you a couple savory options. Um, and it could be sweet. You can make it clairs, or you can make a cream puff, which I'll show you. That paired with the five minute mousse um, is delicious because I throw some raspberries in there and it's just so, delicious. So I highly recommend you try these. Um, let me know how it goes if you see me on the street. Um, but here we go. All right, to start your cream puff recipes, all you need is one cup of flour, one cup of water, one stick of butter, four eggs, and an eighth teaspoon of salt. Now in a clean pan, add your butter, your water, and your salt, and bring to a boil. Once your mixture comes to a full rolling boil, it is time to add the flour. Um, this will bubble up a little bit, um, but it's okay, just stir and stir. At about this time, you'll think, oh no, it's not coming together, it's clumpy, and it's all floury, oh no. But just keep stirring, I promise you, it will all come together. And just like that, that dough came together. Now keep on stirring for a minute or two longer to evaporate any remaining moisture. The neat thing with cream puffs, eclairs, and any shoe paste is that you're tricking the flour um, into holding way more liquid than it should by gelatinizing the starch. And with those plump granules of starch is where you get all this water that leads to the steam, which leads to the puff which makes it delicious. <laughs> now you see there's residue at the bottom of the pan. That means you have done it perfectly. Congratulations. Now it's time to move it on to the stand mixer. Now your stand mixer is great for two reasons. Number one, you don't have to mix it. Number two, it helps cool down your mixture so you don't get scrambled eggs. So let your stand mixer run for three minutes. And while it's running, crack your eggs into a liquid measuring cup. That way you can easily pour it into the batter. Now add in your eggs one at a time waiting until the first egg has gone into the mixture before you add the second one. I always like to scrape down the sides of the bowl before I add my final egg. It just helps make things go along smoother.
One of the lovely things about shoe paste is that you can beat it pretty heavily without it losing lift, which is great. Unlike chem chemical leaveners, which if you beat them a lot, they just deflate. Great, now your batter came together. Now with the paddle, scoop up some of the dough and see if it leaves a V formation. Remember, V is for victory. If it doesn't, add two more tablespoons of beaten egg and save the rest for putting on top before they go into the oven. As you can see, it got dark. I had to make dinner. But this dough is very forgiving. You can store it on the counter for a couple hours or store it in the fridge overnight and dish it up as usual. The magical thing about shoe paste is that you can either dish it out or you can pipe it out into various um, designs. I like using both because you can use them in different applications. I wanted these eclairs to be a little thicker, so I just added some more shoe paste. No big deal. This would also be a great time to preheat your oven to 425. Now it's time to slather each one in egg wash so they come out golden brown and delicious. And I won't forget the mini eclairs. I wanted some of these to be savory and to have a crunch. So I took a teaspoon each of basil seeds, pumpkin seeds, and sunflower seeds. And after the egg watch, wash, I sprinkled those on top. Then I took a blend of mozzarella cheese and cheddar cheese and also placed that on top so when it bakes it becomes um, crispy on top and very delicious. You can also pipe these out on parchment paper in fancy designs. I'm doing hearts for Valentine's Day and I'm going to fry them later and they taste kind of like a churro. I'm going to show you how to do that in a little bit.
As you can hear, my oven is telling me it's preheated, and now it's time to put my tray of cream puffs in the oven for 20 minutes. While my cream puffs are baking, I'm going to fry my churros in a shallow pan filled with a half an inch of neutral oil. I use a chopstick to see if my oil is hot. If it bubbles when I insert it, then it's ready to be fried in. These are all done frying after a couple minutes. Put them in, on a piece of paper towel to let them dry, then sprinkle them with um, cinnamon and sugar. They are delicious. I'm going to be using mine to decorate my five minute chocolate mousse. Once your timer has gone off, pull the tray of cream puffs out of the oven. You're going to need a knife and you're going to cut into each one. This releases the steam and you're gonna place them back into the oven for five minutes so you can crisp up the outside and they won't deflate. Now it's time to start with your five minute chocolate mousse. In your stand mixer, add two cups of heavy whipping cream. Now add in two tablespoons of powdered sugar. While this is beating, add half a tablespoon of vanilla to a teaspoon of coffee granules and a tablespoon of cocoa powder. Set that off to the side and let it continue on beating. Now take the other half of that tablespoon of vanilla and add it to the whipping cream.
congratulations, we made whipping cream. Now take some of it out because we'll be using it as a garnish later on. Stir together well that coffee and cocoa powder mixture and then add it to the whipping cream. This will give your whipping cream and chocolate mousse later on depth of flavor. Make sure to scrape down your bowl occasionally. Here comes the fun part. We're going to melt in the microwave for a minute and 30 seconds a cup of chocolate chips. Stir every 30 seconds to make sure that it doesn't burn. And then we're going to add it to our coffee whipping cream. After you scrape down the edges and give it one more mix, place it in the fridge until you're ready to use. Now it's time to serve up that fantastic five minute mousse we just made. So grab your glass of choice and fill it three quarters the way full. And now it's time to add your whipping cream that we reserved from before. Now if you want, you could add any more garnish. I like crunch, so I'm gonna add cocoa nibs, but you could add chocolate chips, or chocolate swirls, or um, chocolate syrup, that would be beautiful. Also, um, caramel sauce would be lovely too. I love cocoa nibs as an ingredient. It can actually take the place of nuts. Um, because it doesn't come from any sorts of nut tree, most people can eat cocoa nibs if they have a nut allergy. And in fact, the last recipe I'm going to show you also requires cocoa nibs. So I hope you enjoy and give them a try. And of course we can't forget our heart garnish, so just slice into it and then place it on the rim of your glass. And there you go, a restaurant quality dessert for you and your loved ones. Aren't you excited? I know I am. I cannot wait to get into this. Now on to filling those cream puffs. Now it's time to add cream to the cream puffs. So slice open the top and carve out any of the innards with a teaspoon if you desire. I 
like using an ice cream disher to keep everything even and easy for putting the mousse inside the cream puffs. I always like that tartness of fruit, so I'm using raspberries today, but you could use strawberries or red currants or blackberries. All of these would be delicious with the, um, this chocolate cream puff. So once you are done with your cream puffs and everything looks so delicious, don't forget the powdered sugar because that just adds something special. Now that I'm all done with these, it's time to go on to the dark as your heart cookies. In your stand mixer, add one and a half sticks of unsalted butter. Get in there, little guy. Bloop. Now add a cup of brown sugar. I'll be on medium high for three minutes until the mixture is lighter looking. Add in one egg. Once the mixture is combined and you scrape down the bowl, add in two tablespoons of coffee granules or instant espresso. In this small dish, I have an eighth teaspoon of cayenne pepper, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. Add that to the bowl as well. Now add a tablespoon of your favorite vanilla. I make my own, but store-bought is fine. Now also add in a three-fourths cup of Dutch processed cocoa powder. I love the smell of this stuff. and mix well to combine. Now add in a half a cup of cocoa nibs and stir again.
Make sure you scrape down the bowl before you add your flour. Now it is time to add in one cup of flour. This is how you want your dough to be, easily formed, easily molded. This is how we're gonna put our hearts inside. This is how I like to do it. I like to line a cookie sheet with parchment paper and then I'll portion them all out using a disher or two teaspoons. Once they are all portioned out, then I roll each one in my hands to give it a smoother finish. Now comes the fun part. We're gonna put our hearts into these cookies, literally. Take your thumb or your finger and press it down into the cookie using two prints to make a heart formation. Then shape a little bit of the cookie at the bottom into a point and you have a heart. Now it is time to fill them. I'm using a raspberry jelly jam. It's seedless either way. My husband likes it better that way. But I'm using a piping bag to fill these and I suggest you do the same. It just makes it really easy. I'm also using a homemade orange marmalade, which is delicious, and again in a piping bag just to make it very easy to distribute into the hearts.
Once you are done filling up your tray, place them in a 350 degree oven for 14 minutes. When your timer goes off, be sure to pull them out of the oven. They're bubbly and molten lava hot because of the jam, so you have to let them rest at least nine or 10 minutes um, just to let the jam cool down and solidify a bit. Sprinkle with powdered sugar if you wish, and then serve them up. They are a dark and decadent cookie, best eaten with like tea or coffee. Well, thank you for coming along with me on this uh, food journey. Um, it's been really exciting. As you see, I have the cookies here, the dark is your heart cookies. My five minute mousse, now I did put one of these uh, with the clairs in there, but you could just serve it with uh, in the glass, no pro no problem. Um, and uh, the cream puffs. So let's give these a try. Um, the first one I'm gonna go with is the dark is your heart cookies because I love these guys, um, and you know they're made with love, so you can't you can't go wrong. Mmm, <laughs> it has such a good crunch. And that raspberry flavor just hits you. It's kind of floral, actually. I'm actually gonna let my husband finish the rest of that bad boy. The next time, or the next one we're going with is the um, five minute mousse. And like I showed in the video earlier, I always scoop out some whipping cream so that way you're not dirty in two bowls, um, which I think is pretty clever. I threw some cocoa nibs on the top, um, but you could use just. Um, chocolate chips or chocolate swirl or um, curls you don't need to go um with the cocoa nibs but i like that crunch uh and let's see how this tastes mm, so good it will light up people's face like they'll just be really it'll make them smile that's the whole point of this all right i'm gonna go for the tiny raspberry clear even though I have to admit this one's really cute um, but the raspberries are calling my name and this is just raspberries and whipping cream mmm if you want a lighter like a just a bright kind of dessert this is the perfect one for people you could don't have to do just raspberries you can do strawberries or currants that would be great too just that tartness with that sweet um mellow whipping cream would be delicious mm. Mm. anyhow i'm gonna finish the last bite mm. <laughs> very good That being said, I hope you guys make these, impress your friends and impress your family. Just, you know, make the world a better place. Anyhow, that's for me. Uh, that's me for right now. Until I see you later, this is Victoria. Say bye.